We're just waiting for Mar <laughs> Marco. So um, while, while we're waiting for Marco, let's just talk a wee bit about um, what this panel is about. Um, how identification builds economic sustainability in digital advertising. Now that's a very long-winded uh, um, <laughs> panel title, but actually, in the age of GDPR in the walled garden, identity becomes even more important than ever. Um, and today's panel is a discussion about that. So we've got we've got a wide range of buy side, sell side, and sort of identity, and maybe you know sort of sort of uh, identity people, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you will, organisations that are helping to build um, uh, co-ops among. Um, publishers to build a single identifier to help uh, compete with the bigger players. Um, we're still missing one person here, but before we, before we, uh, you know, before we jump in, let's just let the panel introduce them as force, and then we'll, we'll, we'll start. <laughs> Up to me. Who am I? Who are you? Who am I? Alex Still, uh, head of N Platform in Europe, so for Group M, and thereby probably very interested and involved in identity management from multiple angles. Uh, Simon Halstead from Oath, uh, obviously AOL, Yahoo, Microsoft sales across most of Europe uh, and represent our supply side platforms. Jordan Mitchell from Digitrust, uh, the only non-profit industry consortium without commercial interests up here today. We're focusing on standardizing the ID for all platforms uh, to use along with consent attached to that as well. So you're, you're a charity. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'll take contributions. Uh, anyone can write a check. It's a 501c6, right. so it's I don't know tax what that deductible. Is. Oh, okay, tax deductible, good, yeah. yeah. I'm just in time. Marco Bittesi. And Marco's just coming to the stage now. We, we haven't started yet, Marco. We're just kind of doing general introductions. Funny enough, you're next, but we'll let yeah. James go. You go. James Collier, uh, I'm co-founder of Rainbow. Uh, we're a data monetization and consumer experience business uh, focused on carrier level identity and data. But you've been here before, James. I have been here before. No, but I mean like the company's been here before. Uh, yes, thank you for that. So uh, this is a business uh, formerly known as Shine, which was a notorious network level ad blocker uh, of Rory Carthy fame. Yes, and we um, had the famous <laughs> bust up between the flip flopped. Uh, um, he's here somewhere. Where is he? Is he? Love you, Ben. Yes, the flip-flop Ben versus Roy Carty about what, <laughs> when do you, like, this became really bizarre, the whole thing, like, <laughs> but thankfully he's moved on, yeah, which is great. So, uh, so we've had a, a, a massive pivot of the business, change in management, uh, investors, and uh, we're looking at positive consumer engagement around advertising, providing data and identity to essentially enrich the advertising experience rather than detract from publishers being able to make money. And you're the only man here with a bow tie, which is really amazing. Yes, thank you. Distinctive. Marco. <laughs> Who are you, Marco? As if we need Hello. an introduction. Hi, sorry I'm late, everyone. There were so many people outside, I seemed to haven't started. <coughs> um, I'm Marco Batozzi, um, VP of Sales for Europe for Spotify, and uh, previously a long time agency side person. So just la spent the last eight months getting used to the, the sales side marketeer brand side and uh, and just focus on making sure you know Spotify stay at the, the leading edge of tech and data. Thank you Marco. So as we as I sort of was introducing the panel Marco when you arrived late, um, it's about identity effectively and how we compete in this new ecosystem and how we build um, a an ecosystem that, that has longevity. So first question I want to ask of you obviously you know the in digital media GAFA when I mean Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple seem to control all the sort of levers, data, um, traffic, all the rest of it in our ecosystem. So how um, do we as an industry compete with them? And now let's relate it back to identify. So we we'll start over there with yourself. Um, Alex, you can, you can kick this off, because obviously you probably think about this on a daily basis. Daily. <laughs> Dream about it. No, serious. Um, so first of all, I don't think it's about compete coming from our angle, I think we're, well, first of all, kind of a big partner for them. And actually, if you look at Google, it's one of our biggest clients. So it's a, an interesting, I would almost say triangle, where we work together, but also try to make sure 
that we cover the best interests of, of our clients. And I think that's probably the, the big challenge, uh, the conversation we have with them is, how do we make sure on one side we're very happy how certain things develop and how to get more insights and knowledge about consumers and they give us that access to it. The other way is how do we make sure that we also have access to it in a flexible way and we don't have to spend all our money over there just to, to basically reach those consumers. So I think developments are very good within those companies and no one can be negative about it. I think the, the challenge is actually how do we make sure things are open enough that it's part of the mix and it's not a single mix and I think that's what probably part of our conversations is right now with all of them, is how do we incorporate certain things we want? Simon, your CEO was on an ad exchange podcast. What was that pod? No, what was it? it was a Recode podcast, I believe, talking about how Oath can become this the third leg, if you will. I don't know what he meant by that, but uh, <laughs> is that a three-legged I, I stool? Call, I didn't call it I last, the stools I come from all four legs. So he may need the extra leg, but um, uh, an extra leg. Look, so do you need? How do you get your leg so over or up or wherever so way you so want to I do it like. There's a load of things in that. One, publishers do have an immense amount of power and they have to have curated audiences and audiences of value. You know, Oath is a combination of AOL and Yahoo and Microsoft in, in certain <coughs> global markets. You know, we have 1.2 billion users. So actually from a scale point of view, we've got some of that competition anyway. I think then we have to try and make it simpler and easier for people to buy from us and also support the, the whole ecosystem. As a business, we are open rather than close. So in our own approach is that anyone can come and buy from us. You know, we run a supply side stack. Um, I think that is about simplifying our own offering and then leveraging the power of that data and usage, but also driving back to really great content moments, using content actually as a differentiator. So, you know, within that house of brands, we actually have uh, things like HuffPost or TechCrunch, real specialists, deep layers of knowledge that actually can really enhance the, the journey. If you listen to uh, the AI speech, it's about nano moments, not always about just scale. And I think that's another area we can really help. And you have Shingy. And we have Shingy, <laughs> who has better hair than I. Shingy's really important when you're yeah. selling a dream to agencies. <laughs> I don't know how that guy has a job still, let's be honest with you. Um, uh, let's talk about the co-op, the, 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 the charity, if you will. How do you herd all these different people into using a single identifier. I'm, 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 I'm just, obviously. It's a big rock up a big hill. Yeah. And we have a lot of people pushing on it now. But, yeah. But the, the, the whole premise is that eventually, <coughs> platforms and publishers will need to cooperate together uh, to uh, compete effectively against GAFA. And uh, the way we look at it is, you can't cooperate around data. Um, you know, these, these large entities have uh, massive first-party audiences, logins in many cases. They've got centralized data stores and a single identifier that they use within a single tech stack, and that's very, very powerful. So uh, getting the whole industry to come together and combine data, that's, that is way more ambitious than, 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 than I, even I would uh, try to tackle. But creating a common identifier that is uh, consumer consented, that uh, is hosted by publishers, uh, really helps uh, with a common language between all the mapping tables, all the hundreds and hundreds of proprietary IDs. If you have a common layer between all those proprietary IDs in a trusted format, one that is not a commercial, doesn't have the commercial interests, then that's a way for audiences to be, uh, 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 po have portability uh, to all of that, and for all of the other companies to work together more effectively. So you're like the Linux for identification, effectively, the open source. It, yeah, I mean, it's like Wi-Fi or USB. If every uh, company, if Samsung and Sony decided to build their own, and now we start to see every device has their own flavor, it doesn't work well with consumers. So we're trying to create a standard uh, uh, for <coughs> the user ID. Marco, you must be the happiest man in this room right now. Am I? Yeah, well, <laughs> what, what, what is it, 50 million logged in data in Europe or something to that effect? You 140 million globally. Which well, what's it in Europe? We don't break it up for Europe. Okay. So 100, 140 million globally. Is it globally. close to 60? But, uh, <laughs> Less than 40? Uh, you know, I, I kind of look at this differently because we can obsess about Google and Facebook a lot and perhaps too much. Um, you know, I was once on a stage doing a fireside chat stand-up thing, and uh, the moderator went, you know, aren't you a bit of a, a niche 
And I was like, I think you mean niche, because he's American. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, a niche. A niche. A niche. niche. Um, and I said, look, we're, a, we're the world's largest streaming service. We've got the most and best streaming intelligence data. And, you know, we're looking after ourselves and looking after our customers. So, you know, for me, that, that may be a niche, but it's a, <coughs> it's a good niche. And I think, so the first thing, the first message for me is like, you know, focus on, we're focusing on ourselves and, and what we're doing. Secondly, though, and probably just as importantly, there is a uh, shit ton of poor advertising that is being bought out there, which if we got rid of all of that, <coughs> then there would be plenty more money to go on premium publishers. Like Spotify. Like Spotify. And secondly, um, but many others. I, I know Nick's in the room from The Telegraph and other bit. Like, there would be enough money to go around if not so much money was wasted on poor advertising. Well, you can't, you can't that, that's a bigger existential problem than the just than just no, you asked me. <laughs> so, the, so, and then the third thing is, you know, in my view is just making sure that we're properly evaluating how we're spending money um, and what it's really contributing and not, as I, I often talk about, like muscle memory, uh, you know, just not doing the same thing over and over again just because it's easy. I think. I think it's important, and I think we're in that stage now because there's enough stuff going on <coughs> that's making people reevaluate how they're going about uh, advertising and marketing. So, I think that, you know that's that's how I that's how I look at the world. Basically, there's sort of three areas that I'd be focused on. Yeah, I have three things too. Um, so, I think the first thing is is gaffer. I think is a distraction because one, we keep talking about Apple and advertising. Apple don't care. Yeah, but they're blocking, they're, they're but, cock blocking every way you get into the into the ID. But, like but the fact is, is that the the inventory availability of inventory is not the issue, and there's there's a shit ton of advertising out there. What we're talking about when we think about all gardens is actually who are the people that can directly influence that stuff, and it's actually more about fat bag than it is about gaffer, which is the internet originated businesses. It's fat bag. Fat bag. It's Facebook, Amazon, Tencent, Baidu, Ant, and Google. And these are all businesses <laughs> that there you go. And these are the businesses that we don't think about today that can directly influence the advertising tomorrow. Someone so tweet that. Ten cent, you know, massive business, buy <coughs> massive businesses that are all gonna have shape advertising going forward in digital advertising. The second thing is, yeah, I agree. Personal ownership. You know, we, we keep worrying about Google and Amazon and, and Facebook and what they're gonna do. But actually, we need to be more accountable. We can't expect them to police it, but then also have issue with the fact that they have controls. And uh, and then the, the last piece is that we just need to focus back on consumers. Because in reality, when you look at companies like Spotify, they're actually, your strength isn't the fact you have an idea. Your strength is the fact you have a great relationship with your customer. You provide them with a the service they want, and as a result, they trust you enough to give you that intrinsic relationship. And that, that has value. So, that, you know, it's, I think it's less about worrying about what Google and, and Facebook are doing. Well, hold on, hold on. more about the consumer and how that relates to their I don't. I, I don't agree with that. If they're taking most of the spend in the system, it is, it is, a, it is a problem, right? And they have, they have um, deterministic data. Well, 100% yep. of Facebook's I, um, data is deterministic. Mm -hmm. Parts of Google isn't. They've stitched it together some, <coughs> in some dodgy, dodgy way, but they've kind of coded it over to be okay. European Union not too happy with it, but they, they, between the two of them they have that ID, which is what a lot of the programmatic buys are being done, right? Yep. Um, uh, ID matching, all that stuff, like right. that's where all the money is flowed. So the question is, uh, we need as an industry to come together to either work together or are we going uh, is it the case we'll that we'll pick a winner? Or look, well, look, pick a winner. Look elsewhere as well. I mean, the fact is, is that identity doesn't just sit in digital advertising. You know, obviously, the reason that we as a business are focused on carriers is before you even touch Facebook, you connect to a network. So bring, bring carriers in in a way that will actually engender them to help you fight against those businesses. Because they want to be a part of it. They've already made that clear they want to be a part of it. Obviously, massive acquisitions. You've got AOL, Time, uh, uh, you've got, AOL you've got Time Warner. Singtel. You know, Singtel. Al Alcatel, they're all making big acquisitions in this space, and they're making acquisitions in space because this advertising takes up, swallows up 30% of their network in terms of data. Mm. And they're like, we're not getting paid for that, mm. so how do we become a part of it? So we need to incentivize them in the right way. Maybe it's acquisition, but maybe there's other ways that we can channel them too. Just, so just turning out about the user experience, right, because that's quite important, right? And particularly with the advent of GDPR, right, that first step relationship with the users. 
And I know Sasha in the last panel said wall gardens done. I, I, in Europe, I tend to disagree with that. I think that if anything, as a, a gentleman out here said, if anything, there's going to be more wall gardens because you have to have that direct relationship with the users. You just have to know where the data is. It is is being used and how it's being sort of uh, you know, advertising, etc. And having the right to delete that kind of information. And if you're like, you know, third cookie down, it's kind of like, uh, you know, pass back or whatever. Where, where do you even dis where do you even start on that whole conversation? So do you got, does the panel think that there'll be more wall gardens and how disruptive will that be to marketers who are insisting or are pushing to have a unified view of their data use, etc. Uh, this is going to like. This whole process that's or obviously already begun and will accelerate is is going to uh, benefits probably the wrong word is going to focus people's minds around the connectivity between the customer and you know the person using their data or the company using their data and I think for me the more a big part of this is education right that you know there's going to have to be so much more education and when that happens and people's knowledge comes up in this area. I think they they are almost going to want like the customer, the consumer is going to want for you know they're not going to call it a wall garden, but they're going to want their data to be handled more carefully. I think the output of that will be something closer to much more careful boundaries. And I think it's easy to say you know the death of wall garden, but the wall gardens you know it's an advertising term. In Spotify terms, that's our that is our user. All we do is a music app, and it's. We have to keep that data and that relationship, as you mentioned, absolutely num number one thing. And our, our listeners are going to expect that of us. So the minute you turn around and go, you know, oh, we're all going to bring down wall guns and share data left, right and centre, you know, that, that isn't going to work for us. So I think it's, it could, you know, I get the principle of it, but I think it's naive in certain respects when, when you do need to put your customers first. I mean, I think there's one really important here is I think publishers should be thinking about when they use login by Facebook as a solution. Oh, I 100% agree well. with you. I think it's insane. For, the, for that control of identity, y you need to have a service that will generate the desire to subscribe, and then you need to collect that data yourself and be GDR compli GDPR compliant with it. And actually, you know, how many people are using that either for ease or just for access? Those are decisions publishers can control today that can help them have a better set of data to apply to their own advertising. I do think deterministic will win out, and I do think coming back to source publisher will can increase as well be for all of those reasons. Yeah. But that's also tied to wider movements, right? That's tied to ad, stocks te ad stock text and supply mm -hmm. path optimization. So those three things, as they actually come together over the next eight months, nine months, I think we'll start to see a great return to publisher. To Marco's original point, right? No, I, it, it's just, I'll let you jump in now. It, 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 it does feel to me that you're... That there, I know this is going to sound like kind of existential, but it does feel to me right now that we're going to have two ecosystems in the world, right? There's going to be the US, which is a free-for-all, as far as I can see. You know, Trump says, yeah, ISPs use all that data, we don't care. We don't, that's a terrible um, imitation <coughs> of Trump or whatever. Um, you know, like in an I Irish Trump, that's Irish Trump. Um, and Europe, which seems to, it, which is obviously putting user ahead of, ahead of uh, nefarious use of data, if you will, like, you know. And we're going to have a system where first party data uh, publishers, which I call them, with the likes of Spotify, Shazam, even King, who have the relationship with their, with their um, the users is going, going to do well. But some of the smaller premium publishers, which do not have that kind of scale, are going to miss out, are going to, are going to suffer a little bit. I think, you know, if you think about publishers, media owners, content owners as being the custodians of consent, right? They're the, they have a responsibility, a promise that they make on that consent that they're going to provide a certain service. And value that the consumer derives from that is what keeps them coming back. Now how you choose to oper they operate that relationship is down to you as a publisher. Yeah, there's some challenges in that when you're niche, you're small, but there's also massive opportunity because niche audiences have always <coughs> had enormous value. It's just right now, a niche audience can't operate against that high level buying where you can buy a, a ton of crap with crap ads and they get washed out in the mix. So th there's a balance here that derives from when I say personal ownership, I mean personal ownership by consumers and by content owners and by advertisers, right? The, advertise, the data that they use, that I, will change. I think it's the publishers that need to really come together and decide what they want to see happen in the next few years around identity because 
you know, Google and Facebook and, and Amazon have developed tremendous assets and, and they're a giant easy button for advertisers just to throw their, their, their money into. Uh, and in the, in the meantime, the publishers are supporting hundreds and hundreds of walled gardens, only most of the gardens aren't so pretty. They're just like little... They're overgrown. They're just like a little garbage yeah, can. There's a battered the car right? out there. You know those battered cars that have no tires and they're up in the concrete Everybody blocks? Everybody wants those a ones. walled garden. Yeah. Everybody would <coughs> want to have a walled garden if they had the scale of data, the scale of consumer action. The publishers have that relationship with audiences together. They have that da those data assets together. Uh, and it's their pages that is getting murdered by ID syncs today and just ruining the consumer yeah. experience. So if they come together, they can take off all those ID syncs from their pages and give the industry a, a, a common identifier to use that everyone is, has in their mapping tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one other thing. You can also talk about the market frustration with this as well, which could be interesting. No, I think if you look at it, publishers coming together, I think everyone agrees we need to, they need to, to get their act together, if you put it that way. I think one of the things people don't talk about, which is very much combined with it, is also about quality. So I think reaching the right audience, reaching the right consumer, yes, we need identity management, but actually we see a big shift also from our side towards, again, I would say, director relationships again with the publisher, not just to get the right consent from a GDPR and those kind of things, but actually also from a quality, actually knowing it is a human, because actually knowing it is in the right context, it's the right umfeld, everything like that. So so I think there's, the force is not just about identity management, it's actually about access to a consumer, having that identity, but also the quality assurance around certain things. And those things are getting mixed as well, in my view. I, I also, the, you know, we talk, we talk generically about publishers, but if you look, I remember sort of on the trading desk side, if you looked at all your spend, it really condensed into 30, 40, 50 publishers, right, 80 or plus percent of it. And, and a lot of those publishers are not, they're not small publishers. They're not like, you know, Joe Bloggs doing videos about fixing cars. They're big publishers who have relationships with their customers, who probably have data as well. And I, I've, I feel like they have an opportunity to, um, you know, take this, be educate really clearly about what the relationship is between them and their customers or their readers or listeners or whatever. And, and stand out and make sure that they, you know, they do have that quality and they do have that value. I, I, you know, they're, they're, there's an opportunity here, which I think we're just, I, this sort of circling the wagons thing, I, I just feel like I'm a bit down on it. I just think we can talk about it forever. Yeah. And actually, they're, while they're talking about it, some of the big publishers out there have got a great opportunity to talk to, to consumers because they don't understand today, I do this speakers for school thing, and uh, you talk to kids who are 16, 17, they've got absolutely no idea about the relationship of advertising and free content. Absolutely zero. So you think the value chain is broken down effectively? Is it that we've done a terrible... I think we've I been agree focusing with you on about loads of different things, but the quality, so... I agree with you. We, yesterday I was on a financial newspaper and it took 25 seconds to load. And then I just saw a bunch of in-stream, out-stream ads and about 16 ads on the page was going... You know, seriously, at what stage does the user say, fuck this, I'm away, I'm away to... And it just takes one poor vendor, right? We, we see everything. So we see, we sit on the network and we see, you know, when consumers dip into HTTPS environments such as the app or in Spotify, we see when they run across sites and we see immediately in that supply chain when there's a specific vendor and the impact they have on consumer experience. And it's, it's material because there's all kinds of factors. It's like the call request rate. So there's the number of tags that run in the background of an ad or in the iframe or outside the iframe, all of these things which are more or less in, in, in the control of the publisher, but at the same token, in order to monetize in the way that we monetize James today, are desperate possible. for revenue. I mean, exactly. pu publishers so don't, like, publishers don't do that. No choice. Ch publishers don't exactly. do that for the sake of doing it. They're doing because they need money. I agree. But the, the, the fact is, is that unless that focus comes back to the consumer, we're going to be really challenged to change things. Well, maybe, maybe we do need to clear up the, the fact that there's the latency on pages and the quality of these sites. So, so do we need a, a one universal ID like that to, we can all use? Or is, it, is that necessary? Or, uh, or how, how, how do you think we can get there? Like, So I think something like a universal ID will help some of the complexity of matching. There is some value in it. I think uh, the point raised is really important about where do you start and stop with that, right? So for improving user thinking for a better phrase, that's a really small frame of reference, which is actually probably a really good frame of reference. The minute you make it any bigger and start to get overlaying data into that relationship, it's really hard. Look at all the cooperatives just on the media oh, sales yeah. side 
to be consistent because they have different interests at most points. Yeah. And you can't ask separate companies yeah. to behave altruistically. You just can't. It just doesn't happen. They can't divest commercial interests no. because they have shareholders and they have you know, yeah. people who, who they, have to, they supply jobs to, and it's, it's not that simple. And so even at even a, a, a basic level, when you look at match rates, if you try anyone who does matching of data sets, even you know, even when apparently it's from a you know a reputable source and it should be all fully worked out, match rates are still awful because there's still uh, the infrastructure behind everything we're talking about still needs so hundreds much. of proprietary ID yeah. spaces. And then uni the industry is not going to align around one universal ID that comes from a commercial entity with shareholders and a terms of service that might be free to start, but is just going to, you know, once that monopoly is generated, it, 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 they start to charge everyone. So you think that the likes of Live Ramp, which I believe are trying to do a universal ID and get people into it, I was I was laughing to myself. Who, who's going to, you know, let Axiom control that whole ecosystem? It's just like you know. You know, like Linux, let's, let's, let's let Microsoft take over Linux. So, you know, I, vote, you know I, mean? I vote for Equifax at this point. I think they'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> Equifax have a it's great also a track nonsense record. Because, you know, I mean, what do you basically you've got? Cookies, you've got IDFAs, you've got, you know, the IDs that exist within specific environments. And all of these things don't work in certain, don't work in certain uh, 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 devices or whatever it might be. The cons entire consumer landscape is disrupted. And what people are interested in looking for and where they look for it is changing as well. You know, I mean, you see the value of Google's clicks go down with a direct result of, you know, the adoption of voice search with Alexa and, the, and, and people siloing their search. All this stuff has an impact on whether or not there's a relevancy to a universal ID because you can't match it to all of those consumer experiences. It's just not possible. So, you know, we, 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 whilst we talk about the universal ID, other companies like the Googles and Amazons are just getting on with building these companies and we're not going to be able to compete. We need to focus on the consumer. Okay, but we still have those problems I even know. then. Like. But, we, but it, you know, it's a very, it's a, it, it's a very publisher-based conversation, obviously, yeah. but there are two sides to this and there does need to be, and we, I don't think we've seen it yet because it's only, you know, what, what is it, six six, eight months really till that people have been focusing on the quality of what's happening. And it takes a while for uh, publishers and agencies and advertisers to sort of reassess everything they're doing. I think there will be a filtration of where ads get put and how they get put, the, whether there's trusted marketplaces, higher expectations on quality and viewability. I think you know the, that is gonna come around to support publishers. If you then layer in uh, greater expectations around privacy, I think that pool, of, you know, that's this vast pool of advertising, some of which comes under the Google and Facebook networks and all that kind of stuff, will just start to shrink a bit and will refocus on. You think the quality policies. context is going to be more important than ever? And we, we, we did go into an era where. But the industry won't wind back the clock 10 years. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Uh, no, you can't no, just. I'm not no, saying no. that, but it, it's about, it is about. But you, 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 not my spending. example is like. Facebook is perceived as premium by some advertisers. They're happy to buy an audience, and then you're advertising towards some mad housewife talking about, you know, how, how crap her life is or how great her life is, depending on what day it is. Like, you know, is that premium inventory? Is it? Is it really? You know what I mean? That's not. That's not quality, right? So, do we need to have a rebalancing in the in the in the ecosystem towards the One quality? One of the significant changes you see with how Facebook operates in terms of advertising is the the new brands that are being built as a result of that platform. So you have companies like Spoke, you know, where you get your custom chinos and you get watch uh, companies. Custom chinos? Yeah, whatever they... Interesting. Whatever. Both. Like, you know, that they exist. Both like both. these really <laughs> silo-channeled brands, which in the broader sense of digital advertising just don't exist. Why do they exist there? Why have they succeeded through those channels? And how do we replicate that as an industry? How do we broaden so we're not just reliant on still the big agency spend? Because digital advertising is not the same as TV and, and press and, and, and radio. How do we draw those people out into our world? So you're talking about, you're talking about the seven, we're talking about the 70, 30, right? So the 30% is the agency spend for all the global mm -hmm. brands. The 70% is the, uh, the long tail, mid tail, mom and pop shops, effectively, where, where Facebook and Google make all their money. Right. 
How do we how do we encourage how them? Do we, out? How do we, do how do we bring them out and get return for them? Well, you need to have similar types of tools, which you know, thankfully Spotify and businesses like and Shazam and so on who have that first party data can do, but then how do we bring better data to publishers? Because publishers need tools, right? You can't just say, oh, go out and you know, make ad make your ads better, make them faster, and there'll be no downside. I don't think anyone's you know under that illusion, but there are lots and lots of outside of our industry, lots of data companies, and Experian and Equifax, obviously we talk about, but there's banks and there's carriers and there's all kinds of financial institutions which we could bring into our industry if there was the right incentive and the right protections in terms of identity and data. That's why they don't come in today. It's, it's security risk as far as they're concerned because we haven't tidied up our act. ID syncing is a major issue for anyone who owns data. Uh, there's a, a, a fantastic, uh, uh, there's a PhD, uh, a guy called Einhardt at Princeton, who did essentially a paper on the risk of cookie syncing. And it's worth going and, and reading because he, he calls it the single largest threat to privacy. It's not... Well, you know, not only to privacy, but data leakage for publishers, right. uh, consumer latency. I mean, it's, it's just no good. And it's awful. And it's required for shitty match rates from multiple companies, so the audience data loss between buyer and seller is is ridiculously high right now, and, and I think we can solve that, improve the user experience, but it does require publishers to take a, a position in the market uh, on, on how they're going to eliminate that. And, and, and pick a winner, pick a for-profit uh, identity solution, <coughs> um, or come together um, in some way. Like the Germans. Uh, I mean, like, obviously, that's a very sort of general term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, mean, I, I clarify something well, there. Uh, background. Yeah, so well, basically, they have now a, a sort of universal login across all their publishers. It'll be interesting to see. Do you think that'll work? The, the formalized co ops are, they've always been tough to execute on, right? You've got a bunch of competitors formalizing agreements, setting up boards. I think you need something a little bit more informal, infrastructural that allows the. the you know, uh, the for-profit companies, the commercial interests, just to continue forward aggressively. If you do that where they can continue forward aggressively on their remit, then, um, then everything will work better. I think that, that model is really challenged, but if there is a market it will work in, it's probably Germany. Because they're but, very conscious about data. They're very conscious of data, yeah. but also yeah. historically the strength of a Publisher. reasonable Publishers. size number of publishers. Yeah. So as a market, that's a model that will play, may well play well there. I'm not certain that will will work so well in, in the yeah, rest I think of the world. What's, what is interesting, again, it's a, let's call it a local initiative, but most of the consumers who think about it, it's always local. So if there's a relationship, it's with a publisher locally. So it could be interesting, again, market by market, to look at some of those key publishers who do have a good relationship with the consumers or strong brands, how they combine forces on that one. But that's very much local by local, in my view. That you can't do that regionally. It's a different relationship. Yeah. And I love the idea, right? If you have a consumer, it's, it's sort of like a, a platform then with deterministic cross device, um, a, a persistent identifier, um, and one login for consumers to use. Just it, like Facebook. Yeah, and, I mean, that if login. the publishers take a position and go all in, that will work. They got the GDPR problem nailed, yep. they got the audience solution nailed, they can tell everyone, get the, get the F off my pages. Um, and that and login data, that login also gives them access to a huge volume of other types of data as mm. well, because you have a key. But then also think about the benefit to the advertiser. The advertiser yeah. suddenly, you know, you get this scale. deterministic view and you get scale at the same time. The problem, obviously, is driving login for publishers. I mean, typically, what is Gentlemen, it? three I, to five percent. This conversation could go on for hours. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry to cut it across, but we're short for time. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is the ID panel that we have. You know, uh, Alex, who obviously has the Group M ID, Oath ID. We have the charity ID. Digitrust ID. Digitrust ID. Digitrust ID. Digitrust ID. We got rainbow ID. Rainbow. Network ID. Well, network ID, yeah. Yeah. What? Rainbow. Shh. Up above the houses. Rainbow Sorry. rising high. <laughs> Tomorrow. He actually, he said that I couldn't come on stage if it was still called Rainbow, and I'm one day short. We're, we're rebranding. What's your, what's your name? Um, hmm. <laughs> I have to, have to ask PR. I, uh, okay. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause, please, for our fantastic panel. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say it. <laughs>